ultimately. You're, you're cheering by the end of the film. I want to ask you, just what attracted you to that story? Was it the inspirational quality, or what was the first hook for you? Because they come from the Arabic world, as Sarah said, they're, they're also women. Um, and yeah, the, the our goal from the movie is to, um, from telling the story and from it becoming a movie, is putting the refugee topic back on the table, is telling people, um, you know, we're refugees, but we are normal. We have dreams just like you. I have to ask the two of you, first of all, you're, you're sisters in real life, you're playing sisters in the film, you're playing two women who are sisters as well, there's a lot going on there. Um, I want to ask you about building the characters, because I imagine that there might be some things that you know very well about the sister dynamic, because you're playing with each other in the film. But these are two very different sisters, and understanding what these sisters were like and those specifics must have taken some work as well. What was it like creating the dynamic between the Mardini sisters as opposed to your own sister dynamic? Ready? Do you remember the, the paper we did? Yeah. So basically, how we worked on it is I know the story of Yusra and Sarah from the script, basically. And after, and I was dis while discussing with Sally, we tried to put what we would do, Manal, Natalie, in the situation of Yusuf and Sarah. We didn't try to imitate and dig into detail. And when we spoke with Sarah on the phone, we were more speaking about the film in general, not about her or something, because I think it's important to not just say, I don't think they would also like to be like Yusra and Sarah, because we all know that everyone and uh, every city feels the same and look the same. So we tried to put me and Natalie in the situation of Yusra and Sarah, and we also discovered how different we are, like Yusra and Sarah, and how we love each other, like Yusra and Sarah. So basically, this is the work that we did. Thank you, and Natalie. Um, the fact that we are sisters, we used this relationship, ship, the real relationship we have, to create it through the characters of Sarah and Yusra. So it was a chemistry that was that already existed, and we just had to give a part of ourselves and to the part of Yusra and Sarah to build a perf like the, the perfect character. I mean, I don't know how to explain this, but we used the fact that we are sisters to build this authentic relationship that we see in the movie, and I'm really happy to see this wonderful chemistry that we have. And also, we used the fact that Yusra and Sarah are really different, me and Manan are really different, and we used the fact that we're so different and we played with it, and uh, yeah, it's cool. I don't know. <laughs> Can you say again the, the last part you said? I would say, this is good, is it enough? Do you need more? <laughs> That's good. That's very good. You know, um, it's often said that no one loves each other like siblings, and no one fights like siblings as well. So Sally, I want to ask you what it was like to direct two actors who have a very tight bond since childhood, forever. They've known each other forever. You're coming in trying to get very specific performances out of the two of them. What was that like? Well, there was a lot to draw from. You know, it's a very rich and fertile place that you've got as a starting point. Um, and like they said, you know, their differences were actually something that we drew on, maybe more than the similarities between them. And um, yeah, there was a lot of physical work as well <laughs> that the girls did, swimming. Because when they started the film, they were learning to swim as well. So they worked so learning hard. Learning to swim, really? Yeah. And they were working out. And they were... <laughs> we were zero swim, not even floating. I couldn't even float. I it's had true. two sessions to be able to float. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> okay, now we have to go to the swim teacher, I think. <laughs> and to the man who played him. I'm very curious to know um, what it was like to, to have your story uh, told on screen, Sven. And Matthias, um, you're playing a character who becomes a bit of a hero to the sisters. 
uh, in the film, but he's got some interesting dimensions to him as well. He's not a pushover in any way. Um, what elements of Sven's life and what did he tell you that you drew on to portray him in the film? Yeah. Um, first time when I met uh, Sven in Berlin, he was just like, he. At first, he's a wonderful, generous, heartful, fantastic coach, and, uh, uh, and the good thing is, I learned that you know, to coach people is just don't have any ego, just give a lot, give everything you have, and uh, maybe just a bit of an ego. I had a really big ego, he knows that. So. <laughs> Especially in swimming, I was not humble. He knows. I learned that the hard way. But um, yeah, it was like. Um, you know, Sven just said, Matthias, the only thing you can do, just watch them, because they're sisters. Sometimes you will understand them, but sometimes you have no chance. <laughs> so just be there, be calm, and relaxed, and enjoy it. That's what I did. That's what you did. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, any reactions from you, Sven, on seeing this film? Uh, well, uh, I mean, First of all, it was an evening that I was not expecting seven years ago. And um, yeah, I mean, I watched it now the third time and it still makes me cry. And um, I think in this two hours and 15 minutes, I always went through these special times and what we all um, yeah, experienced in the last years. And yeah, I mean, I was always in the privileged situation I never had to leave my home. I um, met amazing girls, amazing friends, and finally I went to the Olympics, and now I'm sitting here in Toronto, so I had <laughs> the easy part. You're doing well. Natalie to swim as well. Really? Yes. Sven taught Natalie to swim as well, the first. Yeah. Sessions. Yeah. Uh, the first week I met Sven, we really, uh, yeah, he told me how to swim. He saw me crying a lot because I was, I was so scared of the water. And I was telling him, I'm, I will not be able to do it, Sven. I was looking at him and I was like, it's impossible. I will never be able to float. And he looked at me and he was like, you can do it, you can do it. And I was like, no. And I left. And then I came back and here I am floating and freestyling and butterflying. Thanks to Sven and Adele, another coach that was amazing with me. But it was amazing to meet Sven and to see where the girls lived with uh, where you see in the movie. Um, I cried the first time I met him because he was talking to me about the girl in a way there was so much love in his eyes. And I remember I called Manal and I was like, it's crazy. And we cried together because He's a man with such a wonderful heart, and I'm so, so, so lucky to know him. And yeah, for real, thank you so much, Sven, and I'm so happy. Sally, Sally, I want to ask you about the most harrowing sequence in the movie, The, the Sea Crossing. Um, I think it was Steven Spielberg who said, the hardest thing to shoot is anything on water. And you have a, just a remarkable sequence that is so dramatic, so compelling, and must have been so damn hard to shoot and to make, to build. Can you talk us, talk us through it just a little bit about how you did that? Yeah, so we, we did all the daytime crossing for real. So we did it in the GNC. We put 25 people in a dinghy. Um, many of the people who were cast in that boat had done the same journey themselves and were refugees. Um, and the actors were amongst them. And when you're out in open water, you can't stop and have a break. You know, you have like, um, the unit base is a big ship that's very far away from you. So there's no ability to stop and get snacks, stop and use the bathroom. So everybody was, who was on that boat was on that boat. And the sea was pretty rough. And then we were filming from an adjoining dinghy that was attached um, to it. So also experiencing the same conditions. So when you see the actors vomiting, they're really vomiting. <laughs> I'm sorry. But the, also, the... <laughs> um, but also there was this sense of, I don't know, the importance, I guess, of what we were doing, like having other people 
on that boat who had experienced it. Um, just brought home like what we were doing and what this movie was really about. Um, and there was a real bond. I remember like everybody got on as individuals and they got off that boat as a family. Um, and that was a really powerful thing to feel and see. Actually, on the scene, nobody, you know, when you act a scene, you're thinking of your line or something. Here, nobody was thinking of himself. Everybody was thinking of the one next to him. Uh, we were just like very aware of each other's on the, on the scenes of the, of the boat. Yeah. And then the nighttime stuff obviously would be too dangerous to do that in open water at night. So that was done in a water tank in Belgium, the nighttime portions. It's fantastically. Conceived, shot, acted, edited, especially. It's, it's really such a powerful sequence. Um, another thing you show us in the film, you know, this is the story of two sisters, their particular story, but you also pull back sometimes to show us the scale of the refugee crisis uh, there in that part of the world, but around the world as well. We get a sense of just how many people are fleeing very difficult circumstances. Can you talk a little bit about what an inspiration uh, that? particular real crisis was for making the film? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, at its front and heart, it was the sister story, a love story between sisters, but, you know, you have to also honour the larger story. And so it was very important that all of the supporting uh, characters had full and explored lives and that we got a sense of why they were taking the journey, who they were as people. Um, that was very important. And also Nizar, the character of the cousin, um, Yusra and Sara travelled with their real cousins, um, but we decided to fictionalise Nazara a little bit. Uh, and that was because, um, as amazing as Yusra and Sara's story is, they are the 1% of refugees. And it was important to me to show the 99% as well, um, who maybe don't have the happy ending and the inspirational ending. So, yeah. Thank you. I, I know that you know, there are many people in the city of Toronto who have uh, histories of uh, coming to Canada as refugees. I wonder if there's anyone in the audience who would care to say that this is something that they've resonated with them. Okay, up here, down here, yes, and others as well. I want to just uh, maybe take a moment because we know that there are people who might have very much connected with the film through their own personal stories to see if there are any uh, questions uh, that uh, anyone in the audience wants to ask. We don't have a lot of time, but we might be able to take uh, a couple of questions from uh, the audience. And maybe we can just uh, have a look. And if you've got something that you want to ask, you can just put your hand up and call out a hand. Yes, right here. you know, lose and stand up again, it taught me how to share, and you, I can realize that me and my sister, if we were not athletes, I don't know how we would have handled the journey, but because my dad was so tough on us as a coach, we were so disciplined, we had this lifestyle of an athlete, um, we knew exactly how, what to do, like we knew how to manage, we knew how to just jump into the water and swim, we, obviously we were afraid, but it's exactly the same. When you like work for a goal in life, you're afraid that you'll never reach it, but you still try. And this is the spirit of, of an athlete. And um, yeah, after becoming a member of the Refugee Olympic team, I realized it's not only about me. Sport is not only about getting a gold medal. I hope that I changed something in the world that is way bigger than a gold medal. Um, and that's what sport did for me. Uh, there are actually athletes from the Refugee Olympic team too here. I'm so excited that they're here. They made it. The athletes who are here on uh, in the floor, they are uh, resettled to Canada. Um, thanks to UNHCR and the IOC. So they could also start a new life and To bring the question maybe to the um, Olympic movement, um, the IOC and the Olympic movement are doing a lot for refugees over the last decades. And I think the step to found this refugee Olympic team was a special moment for this. And it also focused the world of sports more into the world of development. 
and the world for sports for development is growing and growing and growing. I mean, UNHCR has an own sport department now, and other organizations are doing also very good things. You read it a lot of things, and um, I try also to help refugees in at the moment in Germany. We will found our foundation, and um, yeah, the IOC is very supportive. Like I said, not only for the athletes here, for Yusra and for me, also for a lot of um, other refugees who live in camps. And I think this is the way how sport is, and where sport can connect people. Thank you. Time for one more quick question. Yes, right here. repeat uh, the question briefly. Um, this is a professor of refugee studies at New York University who teaches the story of the Mardini sisters and uh, this, she found this to be the most comprehensive film she's ever seen on refugees and asks you about uh, the tensions within the different kinds of refugees, um, ideal refugees versus less so, smuggling, that kind of thing. How did you uh, find the balance there? Well at its heart it was about the sisters. And I think um, their spirit is the thing that was the A story. All of the things you mentioned were in my head, Jack's head, when we were conceiving it. But it was always the case that that was secondary and would get told through the sister's story primarily. Um, and so, you know, you never want to be preaching something. And so it was really keeping it in that kind of, um, the realm of the sisters is like the main story that we, the other stuff was able to come in in a very natural way without being too heavy-handed hopefully well, i think you've made just a terrific film we're so pleased to open this year's festival with it i just want to ask you to please join me once again and thank you the director of the swimmers Saleh Adesini, Sarah Mardini, Lucia Mardini, Anna Isa, Natalie Isa, Ben Spanakrens and the Polish Square Couple. Thank you so much. Matthias and Schweighaber are Thank you so much, the team from the Swimmers. <laughs>